welcome yes you're on the love them knives channel and uh cancept knives spirit it's the spirit knife s35 vn steel cpm s35 vn there's your model number k 102 or 1002 actually a5 this knife is a titanium frame lock flipper. I know I hardly ever do any titanium frame lock flippers on my channel, but I thought I'd make an exception. That's, of course, that's a lie. You know, I do a lot of them. Uh, and this drops really nice. You know, when I think of Cancept knives, it's hard not to think of Kaiser knives because... Kim Ning, their main designer, I guess. I don't know if he set up Cancept Knives, but that's where he's at. And Joyce was my contact at Kaiser. She's now my contact at Cancept. But the two companies, I don't think are bueno with each other. So I, they're not working together. But whoever's making the knives, it, they seem very similar to Kaiser in quality, which is good. They're good quality knives. Titanium backspacer, lanyard hole through there. The hardware, nothing all, you know, too astounding here. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty standard for what most knives uh, present. And then the pivots are machined, look nice, uh, got entry front and back. So, in case this is not a D shaped pivot, you'll be able to stabilize it to break it loose if it has. A little too much thread locker in there and we will take this one apart it looks like they've done some weight relieving on the inside which brings us to numero uno here and of course I always mix it up because I never have any really standard formula for doing reviews which might be nice someday but uh, I just wing it 137 grams let's flip around to ounces and 4.85 ounces Okay, it's under five ounces, and it's a pretty standard size knife. And I don't really have anything terribly standard on the table. They're either big or they're small. Here's the mini bull mastiff. So yeah, it's way bigger than that. But here's the bull mastiff. Grandpa came in and changed the game here. No, it's smaller than the bull and the mastiff. How about the banter? Oh, it's bigger than the banter. I, where, maybe my feldspar. Got to be close, right? Yeah, closer. Closer. And this is a three and a half inch, you know, eight inch, eight and a quarter overall, which we can clarify that real quick here. Uh, this is 3.75, which is about 95 millimeters. Eh, it, not 3.75. It's 3.65, okay, and about 94 millimeters. So not quite there. Um, but it's under eight and a quarter inches at, you know, 20, between 20 and a half and 21 centimeters. So actually, that's a... I mean, that's a lot of blade, about threw it around here. That's a lot of blade for no longer than the overall length. Because like on a PM2, you got eight and a quarter, but you got a three and a half inch blade at best. And this one is 3.65 with under eight and a quarter. So you're stuffing a lot of blade in there and it looks the blade to handle length is all you want right there. I don't know who the designer is. It doesn't have his name on here, but I'm going to guess it's probably Kim Ning. Um, you got this kind of scallop finish in here, and that's that's kind of nice on top of the blade. It gives a little bit of styling cue there. I don't know if it's really effective for anything in particular otherwise, but got a lot of belly to the blade. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to be the piercing king, but it should be a reasonably decent slicer and it's sharp comes in a box and the can set box 
This is interesting, isn't it? Slide it open, and we got, uh, so this is all fixed here. And let's knock this out. And here's the pouch it comes in. And of course, you know, plastic, and then it's in this pouch, which I have a couple other Cancept knives that came in this pouch, but I didn't have a box like this. Uh, and uh, But I got those pretty early on. Now, it looks like they've upped the packaging game. And then you got a microfiber cloth, and then you have a fold-out paperwork. This is secret ink. You have to have a special formula to it. No, I'm just kidding you. Okay, so this is uh, the warranty information. Pause and read. Was that enough? I'm sure you're good. Okay. And microfiber cloth. It's nice to get that as well. All good. It's very structural. Uh, it seems like the, I mean, the outside feel of these is a little bit like velvety kind of feel on this paper, which is very much like the Kaiser boxes. So, uh, interesting in that regard. The knife itself. Wow, that's a nice drop. It's not really deep carry, but it's not bad. And it's holding uh, the pocket clip in place with two screws there. There's your cutaway for your lock bar. Obviously, they have a hardened steel insert over travel stop. Yeah. Uh, here's your lock up, about 20%. Let's kick that open again. Uh, no, that's about 35%, close to 40% there. So, that's, that's pretty strong. Yeah, uh, plunge looks very symmetrical there. The grind is a nice grind. Oh, that's good. And backspacer, yeah, I like it. I like the setup. I like to have a backspacer. Don't think you're going to come in contact with that blade along here. And the fit and the finish is good. There's no gotchas there. There's no sharp points or anything. Um, one thing that they, they don't have is jimping on the flipper tab. Uh, flipper tab doesn't look too obtuse. So that's pretty decent. Pretty intuitive. Kicks right open. Not a super strong detent. Okay, I can do that. So I throw it in there at about a four and a half. Yeah, at best, a four and a half on the detent. Nope, couldn't do that. It felt like I may could have, but I couldn't. And I don't know, maybe I was gripping the lock bar too much. So it's it kicks right out. It's I could try and fail it. There you go. Yeah, I could fail it. It's just, uh, it's yeah, it, but it's just really smooth. It's really nice. So uh, I think it's appropriate, really. And But if you don't have thumb studs, if you don't have a cutaway or a fuller where you can finger flick it or whatever, actually I can right on just the regular blade here, just back like that, I can kick it open. So, um I like it the way it is. I like the detent the way it is, so I'm not going to bitch and moan about that. Ergos, eh, you got this front choil here, and then uh, this is pretty neutral along here. Um, yeah, okay, okay. I was thinking, am I going to be sitting on there? Uh, it's, I'm close to doing that, but not quite. So I'm on the down slope of this side here. So I'm okay, I'm okay. Uh, flip it around, reverse grip. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually, it's, it's better. Why does reverse grip seem to be better on most knives that I handle? So that that's good. Yeah, that's easy, and, and here's, you're over the detent ball. Watch it, I mean, just very little coaxing. It drops, so, and let me tell you about this as well, because 
you can get this in a lot of different uh, iterations, right? So here it is, and it's costing a whole 189 blasters, but 189, let's see, White Mountain, got this from White Mountain, so um, like 190, so what's that? $19 off, so if you took 20 bucks off of this thing, you're in the 169, so maybe this would be like 170 something. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's bad at all. I think it's very competitive. And here's your extra little information here. I think I printed this off. So you can get, how weird is this? You can get this knife. See, there's no cutaways here. But there is in this other green model. And here you go. This is carbon fiber. If the back is titanium, I don't want it. I don't want a half and half. I didn't get this because the back is titanium and there's no inlay of carbon fiber. So I got this one because it's the same front and back. I don't want a black blade, okay? So if I could have got the green with a, with a stone washer satin blade, I would have done it. But I didn't want an inlay here, nothing here, okay? Uh, the carbon fiber, if it's a frame lock, then I doubt if it's a bolster lock. I'll have to look that up. But no, so this is where I can get the whole thing and a satin blade. Now, you can do whatever you want with this, right? It's a big old canvas, so you could, you could anodize this, whatever you want. Um, and let me get my balance on here. Where's my balance point? There we go. So, okay, that's pretty good. And it goes left or right. So, you know, you can go left hand, you can go right hand. That's good, except... The lock bar's right hand. So that becomes an issue. But, you know, I've got a buddy who's left-handed and he says it's really a bigger deal uh, to not be able to have a left-hand pocket clip than it is to have to deal with this when you're a lefty. Because usually the lefties are pretty good at doing that, just engaging. And when they can get the lock bar on the other side, they will, but this is not as big a deal as I thought it would be for left-handed people. But I'm good with where it is. I'm just a little bit burned out on frame locks. I mean, this would be nice as a bolster lock. That way you're not staring at this big, long cutaway all the way down there. And, you know, I like liner locks because they are the same front and back. And, you know... I like that. I like the back to look like the front, and it's nice when that happens, so I'm getting a little bit more particular. But this functions just fine. This is easy to disengage, too. Take a look at the pass-through here. Yeah, different elevation. Boom. Drop. Easy. Just like that. Man, that's nice. Yeah, the design flow is really good. This flows right into the bolster here, and it flows here. Uh, it's, it's really a good design. Interesting look, isn't it? I mean, I, I like this, uh, that curve blade on there. Uh, I, I like the whole way that it flows into the handle, this whole presentation here. I like it. It looks good. Let's take it apart. You can see through the camera half the time. Uh, where are we pulling from? Let me see. Yeah, the whole thing's turning. But okay, I was on the back side of this. There we go. But you know, I, I could stabilize it with my finger. If I had to, I'd just get another number eight in there and hold it. But it didn't take that much. So. It uh, doesn't look like, yeah, there's any thread locker there. Looks pretty good. But these are probably number six, are they? Yeah, yes, they are. Okay. Be kind of nice if they went to number eights. Uh, I think that's a really nice touch to do because number eights are easier to function with. As they get bigger, then you don't end up with... 
with a situation where you booger this up a lot because number sixes are just so small to get into. Now this, I could feel it popping apart. Here we go. So it's really clean on the inside and there's your track for the internal blade stop. And then you've got a nice steel washer with a nice groove in that for the ball bearings to roll around in and really, really nicely done there. That's, that's pretty dang good. Okay, so what do we got? Ceramic bearings. There's your bearing ring. That's really clean too. I don't see much lube in here at all, but that's okay. Um, there's your track for your detent. Now, they didn't build a ramp or anything for the detent track, but that's okay. It's good. Uh, take a look at the rest of this. It's like squeaky clean, isn't it? Ceramic. A detent ball over travel stop with your hardened steel insert and nicely weight relieved here and then there's your backspacer if you want to pop that out you can it's popping away already and there's your pocket clip but now I don't need to do much of anything with this except throw it back together I don't need to purge anything everything's clean as it could be but I think I'll add a drop or two of lube now that I'm putting this back in we'll set that down like this and set this right on here just like there now we can throw our other bearings on here kick this but yeah really clean uh feels good easy to take apart so that's not difficult look at that Not a problem at all. Just pop right back together. Let's uh, put the screw in here. Don't want to get your threads crossed. And that's it. That's, that's that. Let's get this set down in here. properly okay good that number six fit them tight though didn't it wow that was easy okay let's take a look at this and see if we're centered up and we are is there any blade play? No. How's the drop? Yeah, a little less free dropping than what I had it. Well, I don't think that's really too far off though. Yeah, that's 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 good. That's good. Yeah, check Cancept out on their Facebook page because they do a lot and they really ask a lot of questions of the viewers and they've done changes between the prototypes and the final production based on what people are telling them. So they really listen to you and this knife really for well under $200 probably what around 170 something uh, delivered that I, I'm not finding fault with that. There's just a hell of a lot of knives that are over $200 with these same materials. So uh, I like the way it, it drops. The ergos are fine. It looks like, you know, everything's balanced, symmetry, grind, materials, the feel, the fit and finish. The lockup is very adequate here. So yeah, I'm good with it. Packaging is fine as well. Check it out. There's a lot of different models. Go on White Mountain. I'll give you the link to that and check them out. But they've, they've got several models out now. They're pretty new for 2020, but I don't think their experience is new. I think they've got people that have been doing this for a while. It's just that the brand name is new. Oh, yeah. I'll leave you to it. Thank you so much. You know what we do. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.